Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome back. So, we were talking about turbulent flame speeds and uh, we will go into uh, some experimental configurations. So, just to uh, recap on the concept of turbulent flame speed and uh, what we just did uh, was that uh, we took a uh, uh, now uh, we essentially took a, uh, if you take a cuboid channel like this ok. Uh, so, um, before we go into the experiments, we, we just want to show you something like this. That is, uh, suppose this is a uh, this is this is a cuboid in which you want to basically um, find out the turbulent flame speed. Uh, this this uh, this uh, I'm, I just did this a little bit in a, in a simplified manner. But I before we go into the experiments, let's discuss this in more details. And here you have the uh, turbulent flame which is uh, stabilized, just like the movie you saw. saw okay. So this is your turbulent flame. Okay. So uh, now. Uh, 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 to give you a more detail, so now each of these points um, essentially uh, say if we say uh, consider an infinitesimally small um, uh, area on the flame and rep represent this by dA and the relative velocity of this flame surface uh, with respect to the local fluid velocity is of course SD in the normal direction, right. So, uh, this is essentially um, uh, SD, SD dot n vector times dA vector, so it gives you SD dot times dA. Okay, so uh, now the local, now the total mass flow rate that is entering ma into this whole surface, we can write this as m dot is equal to integral over the entire surface rho times. If it is a uh, close to the unbound side, then it's of course rho times. Um, we can approximate this as essentially rho u times s d times d a. Okay. So, uh, and uh, th so this is the rho u times uh, the local displacement flame speed times the dA and now that is equal to we can uh, if we now want to represent this whole uh, mass flow rate into the fuel air mixture by one average velocity of the fuel air mixture then that is the turbulent flame speed. So, then that is given by rho u times S t and what is the area? Area is of course, this is the area which is this uh, project area which is given by A. Okay. So, this is A and let this area is be equal to full uh, this thing is equal to A t. So, then this is uh, rho u times S t times A. Okay. So, this is now where you see where does S t come from. So, now we can simplify this if we assume that S d is equal to S l over the entire flame surface we do not consider any effects of stretch. So, then what you get is that to the leading order rho u is if this is an isothermal surface then rho u rho u cancels out. So, rho u cancels out. So, then we get S t times A is essentially S l uh, this is over the entire surface area. So, this is A t. So, then S t is essentially equal to uh, S t by S l is equal to um, A t by A. So, of course, this comes into the assumption that uh, you have assumed that uh, S d is equal to S l over the entire surface which is not true, but uh, still uh, uh, what you see here is that uh, that uh, what you see here is that that uh, even that even then uh, to the leading order your st by sl is essentially uh, equal to uh, uh, is close to at by a and uh, in in fact in reality also your st by um, by sl is uh, close to at by uh, a and uh, your st that is a uh, that is a turbulent flame speed is much much more than the laminar flame speed is simply due to the is due to the fact or the, or the overall propagation rate of the flame surface is much much greater than the local propagation rate of the flame surface this is simply because you have uh, turbulences met has generated a very large flame surface area due to stretching and wrinkling over a multitude of length and time scales so because this area of the flame is much more it can consume the fuel air mixture at a much faster rate. Okay. 
and it can that is why it can essentially propagate on, on average it can propagate much faster than the planar laminar flame. So, this is a remarkable property of the turbulent flame which is utilized in different uh, um, in uh, different engines. So, that is why I was saying that about gas turbine engines you can have a flame stabilization at high speeds in a gas turbine engine because your turbulent flame speed is much higher than a laminar flame speed. In a car engine um, it can run it can produce a lot of uh, power by consuming lot of fuel without producing um, pollutants uh, is because your turbulent flame speed allows uh, if you have lot of turbulence inside the engine you, it allows the propagation uh, the flame to propagate much faster than it can than a laminar flame can propagate ok. So, the turbulent flame speed is a very very important thing and from here you can clearly see that why your ST by SL is, uh, uh, is uh, much greater than um, 1 because your AT that is the that is this wrinkled flame surface area is much much greater than the projected uh, area or the area of a planar laminar flame. So, next, next we will show you how we will determine the turbulent flame experiments. So, it is not a simple experimental setup. So, this is uh, comes from Kobayashi's group in Tohoku University um, uh, and reported in this uh, proceedings paper in 1996. So, here they have a high pressure turbulent uh, Bunsen uh, flame uh, 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 setup. So, this is uh, where your flame is actually. So, you see the flame to be essentially. Um, so, the flame is essentially here. Mm, okay. Uh, so this is this is the this is the, this is the flame. Uh, 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 if you can see, uh, and uh, then there are like many uh, diagnostics. Of course, this experiment has to be placed in a very high, uh, very uh, low thickened uh, pressure, thickened walled uh, pressure vessel, and then you need to have optical access so that it can the, the flame motion or the flame surface um, can be visualized with a CCD camera using uh, Schlieden techniques, which will give you the density gradients. Okay, and. Um, so then, uh, it also monitor measures the local uh, local flow, of, uh, uh, flow velocity fluctuations because, we, as we remember, we want to get the turbulent flame speed as a function of um, uh, the URMS. That is, of course, one of the important parameters. You can get planar laminar flame sp uh, speed and the and the flame thickness from uh, either by experiments or by you cannot get flame thickness by direct experiments unless it's a very high end experiments using different uh, probes like synchrotron, etc. Um, in, in a synchrotron, etc. But you can get them easily by using this Chemkin tools, Chemkin premix tools. Mm, so, the planar laminar flame speed and the flame thickness uh, can be obtained easily. So, we, we wanted to obtain ST as a function of U prime 0, uh, L 0, which are the flow which are the flow parameters. So, these are the flow parameters and, and uh, SL um, the planar laminar flame speed and LL. So, uh, this needs to be measured, this needs to be measured and uh, whereas, this can be computed, this can be computed. So, this uh, needs to be uh, um, uh, measured and for a given uh, a given fee uh, and a given fuel uh, air mixture and for a given pressure your SL and uh, LL can be calculated using Chemkin premix or Cantera ok. So, these things uh, can be calculated. So, once you have uh, if you can measure the turbulent flame speed if you can measure u prime 0 and if you can measure um, uh, the L 0 and as calculate SL and LL then you can essentially find correlations between uh, turbulent flame speeds and these parameters. So, so uh, how do you measure turbulent flame speed? Now, before we measure let us show you some different structures of turbulent flames. Mm, so, this is you see that um, at the same uh, flow velocity ok if the flow velocity is remain same at u, u average is equal to 2 meters per second and same hole diameter of 2 millimeter. Mm, so, this on the left hand side you have the turbulent flame behavior at low pressure and then at high pressure. Of course, uh, this is uh, one of the artifacts. Uh, if you do the same uh, uh, flow visualization also you will see that high pressure your uh, flow has very, very small scale structures in with respect to the flow at, uh, at low pressure. The reason is that uh, once again if you remember your uh, eta uh, by uh, L 0 is essentially Reynolds number to the power of minus 3 by 4 ok. So, and Reynolds number you see uh, is essentially uh, rho V D Y uh, rho U R M S um, U uh, U prime 0 times uh, say D uh, by uh, or, or L 0 um, by uh, by uh, mu. So, if uh, mu does not change um, um, much uh, uh, such with the pressure. So, uh, U prime 0 and L 0 if that also does not change too much with pressure, but rho is directly proportional to pressure right at a given uh, if, if the temperature is fixed. Um, so, uh, it directly increases with pressure. So, that is why the 
the scale separation the eta for a given L0 your uh, Kolmogorov length scales become smaller and smaller with pressure. So, uh, if, if you keep all the all the other properties uh, constant, but if you decrease uh, or if you increase the pressure your Kolmogorov length scales become smaller and as a result of that any turbulent jet or a flame uh, has smaller and smaller structures because your flow has much small structures now it is much more turbulent. That is the same reason why in an engine you have very very small Kolmogorov length scales uh, at very high pressures. Okay. So, this is how uh, how a flame or uh, another turbulent flame uh, will look like at, uh, at, a, at a pressure of about, about 10 bar or 1.0 MPa mega Pascal um, uh, whereas that uh, at uh, 1 bar or, or that 1 atmospheric pressure this is what the what a turbulent flame look like. So, uh, at a different pressure your turbulent flame uh, structure is very very different as you can see from here. Okay. And of course, this being much more wrinkled it must have a much more flame surface area. Okay, so, how do you extract uh, the how do you find out uh, the turbulent flame suite? So, for that first you have to extract the mean uh, flame cone. So, you find out all these flame contours like this okay, and uh, this is for one realizations there, there can be for another realizations like this. Um, so, they will get a different kind of realizations and uh, then you can essentially average them out and uh, find out the average uh, the for example, the average uh, flame cone for this will look something like this. Okay and um, uh, we do some image processing to extract the flame edges and find out the mean flame edge and it looks something like this. And then basically you uh, say that your ST um, is essentially equal to u sin, u sin theta by 2 um, uh, because uh, if this uh, flame cone is like this um, then, uh, uh, then uh, my say if my ST is like this. So, then um, uh, uh, this is how I, I evaluate it. So, say this is uh, this, uh, the, uh, this one is better. So, say this is my uh, this is my u uh, this is not my st sorry. So, this is my u. So, um, uh, so now I can resolve this u into the normal and the tangential component ok. So, say this is my u and uh, then this is my theta by 2 this is my uh, normal and this is this is my st ok. That is the mean flame speed that is the that is the component of u which is uh, which is perpendicular to the mean flame cone okay now this this is the mean flame means it's essentially statistically stationary because it has been time average so because uh, is for it to remain statistically stationary the flow velocity that is perpendicular to it must be equal to the local must be equal to the global turbulent flame speed so that is the argument by with which you get this st once again that uh, the idea is that if this if you have a um, if you have a if you have uh, flame surfaces like this uh, okay and um, you these are the, the, the different flame surfaces that you generate extract from the extract from the different uh, uh, videos and then you generate basically a mean flame surface by averaging over all these flame surfaces like this okay and then uh, this is your say mean fluid velocity which you know from your mass flow readings and uh, then you basically resolve it into this direction um, into the normal and the tangential components um, ok. Uh, so, this is your mean flow velocity. So, this is your mean flow velocity you resolve it into normal and tangential components this is your theta by 2 ok and uh, so then this guy. So, then uh, this this now this this mean flame surface for it this mean flame surface to remain statistically stationary it must be fed with a flow velocity which is normal to the mean flame surface and this nor and this flow velocity normal to the mean flame surface must be equal to the turbulent flame speed for this given configuration all right so then if you can find out what is the uh, mean flame velocity normal to this uh, normal to the uh, to this uh, mean flame surface then that is my st so then that is nothing but u uh, this this velocity is nothing but u times sin theta by 2. So, then this means that that uh, my st is essentially u sin theta by 2 ok. So, if I know uh, if I know my uh, uh, if I can extract this mean flame cone and find out the uh, the the different uh, uh, the different uh, um, um, different uh, th uh, thetas 
uh, for different uh, configurations then I can find out uh, what is the uh, the mean uh, mm, what is my turbulent flame speed and uh, so uh, they did experiments for different uh, configurations at uh, uh, so we see that uh, different uh, configurations that the experiments and when that uh, put this in a plot we see that this is ST by SL and this is U prime by SL. Uh, so, this is um, you see that uh, this uh, has a kind of a bending behavior uh, all of these curves. So, uh, like this the bend um, after the increasing and uh, uh, what we see is that uh, that as uh, pressure increases ST by SL increases. So, this is at, uh, at a pressure of uh, uh, 0.1 um, MPA and this is at a pressure of 0.5 MPA okay this is at a pressure of 1.0 MPA and this is at a pressure of 2.0 MPA and uh, this is at a pressure of 3.0 MPA. 3.0 MPA is a very large pressure this is essentially 30 bar and you see that at this high pressure at an U prime by SL of about 10 uh, your uh, UST by SL is has reached up the value of about 30. So, that is a huge uh, increase over the normal uh, planar laminar uh, flame speed mm, that this turbulence has, uh, flame has reached. So, actually the turbulent flame uh, speed in this case it can be shown that has not reached uh, increase so much, but if you remember the planar laminar flame speed decreases with pressure. So, uh, whereas the turbulent flame speed uh, can change slightly with uh, actual turbulent flame speed does not change uh, too much with pressure, but it is essentially the decrease of the uh, uh, flame speed with the planar laminar flame speed um, that um, uh, causes this uh, rapid increase with uh, pressure. So, but anyways that is an important uh, uh, thing um, because if ST was uh, so small at uh, at high pressure then it would be very difficult to essentially stabilize flames in, uh, in high pressure gas turbine engines. So, that is a uh, good thing. Next we will talk about in uh, some details about this uh, uh, dual chamber high pressure turbulent combustion vessel at uh, Princeton. So, where uh, many of this um, uh, expanding turbulent flame experiments were done. Uh, these were also done at uh, previously at uh, Leeds uh, University and um, uh, but this uh, setup is a, is a little bit different from those. Uh, the main setup the main purpose is to essentially measure the uh, expand the turbulent flame speed of expanding turbulent flames at high pressure and at constant pressure. So, uh, to maintain constant pressure there is a uh, uh, nice uh, this, this setup is used. So, um, you see if you have a have a enclosed vessel and if you uh, increase uh, and if you ignite the flame at the center of that vessel uh, what happens is that uh, this flame will expand, but immediately the pressure will rise. Okay, but uh, as you know that uh, the flame, the planar laminar flame speed is a fun strong function of pressure. So if you uh, if you do an experiment where your pressure is continuously increasing, then you are essentially changing one of your most important parameters. So you cannot do a good experiment by where the most important parameter changes like that, um, uh, where a where a where a depend independent variable uh, like planar laminar flame speed, which which is an independent variable in your scaling laws for turbulent flame speed. So, you want to obtain the turbulent flame speed as a function of uh, planar laminar flame speed, flame thickness, integral length scale, uh, URMS etcetera. So, in this uh, scaling laws your uh, SL and L uh, and uh, your flame speed and flame thickness appears as independent variables. So, you cannot do an experiment where an independent variable essentially is changing. Of course, the flame thickness will also change with pressure as you know the flame thickness decreases with pressure and that is one of the reasons also why you see that emergence of different uh, 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 finer and finer scales um, uh, in the turbulent flame that you saw uh, just uh, for the Bunsen turbulent flame that you saw. Okay. Now, uh, the thing is that uh, so in this setup uh, what the people do is that uh, they we have a dual chamber uh, vessel. So, you have an inner chamber and an outer chamber and we ignite the we fill up the inner chamber with the fuel air mixture and then we ignite that thing with a spark. So, as soon as the spark is ignited this inner chamber and outer chamber has an has some ports which opens up uh, and uh, uh, and uh, this can essentially communicate. So, the pressure that is increasing inside the inner chamber due to um, due to uh, this uh, due to this uh, gas uh, expansion um, due, to, due to the uh, due to the uh, flame uh, due to the overall temperature rise inside the inner chamber. So, that can be absorbed into the outer chamber. Okay. As 
a result the flame essentially propagates in an isobaric environment. So, um, this provides very valuable data for turbulent flame speed and this is how essentially a turbulent flame which is ignited in this uh, dual chamber uh, turbulent combustion vessel looks like. So, um, you see that this is just the this is right after the spark where this kernel is formed and you see this this uh, shock uh, being formed right after the spark which immediately goes away. Mm, so, this is how um, uh, so, you see that this is how this uh, turbulent flame is expanding. This is a, a false colored Schlieden imaging uh, of the actual experiment. So, you see that uh, this uh, flame is um, this is how the turbulent flame structure look like. I will again play this video. So, you see that it immediately forms uh, this turbulence from several wrinkles at different scales on the flame surface and uh, essentially the flame propagates very fast um, at the later stages. Okay. And this is a very short time experiment as you see it is of the order of 8.7 milliseconds and the average radius is about uh, uh, 3.5 uh, centimeters. Okay. So, these are um, very Im important experiments um, and uh, this gives you a very clear idea of how the turbulent flame structure looks like where it is essentially s uh, stretched and wrinkled at a multitude of length and time scales. Okay. So, this is how the different Schlieden imaging looks like the, um, uh, the black and white Schlieden images. So, you see that uh, at uh, this is at uh, one, one atmosphere, this is at um, um, essentially uh, at uh, one atmosphere, but um, uh, so this is this is the this is uh, on this in this matrix. What we have is that uh, we essentially denote uh, three uh, this in this way. Time increases um, for the same experiment, and in this direction, uh, the experimental conditions increases. So in uh, from here, this is about p u one uh, low u r m s um, uh, low u r m s or u prime zero. Here we represent URMS by URMS, and this is P1 uh, moderate or uh, high uh, URMS, mm. and this is P equal to 5 and uh, high uh, URMS. Mm, okay. So, this is uh, so you see that in this one, uh, in this one, as you see that this one atmospheric pressure low URMS, uh, mild uh, wrinkles are being formed, and the flame is propagating, of course, uh, um, uh, uh, at, at a given um, uh, average propagation rate. Uh, and then um, here you see as you increase the URMS, this uh, scales become finer and finer, okay. There is small scale structures being formed, and that is clear because uh, once again, your um, your now the Kolmogorov length scale is actually uh, is actually uh, is actually smaller okay so uh, uh, in this case uh, your uh, essentially your turbulence and Reynolds number is is uh, is uh, mm, um, is uh, smaller uh, is larger in this case with respect to this case okay but um, uh, so that causes this increase of uh, increase of uh, this uh, mm, uh, this finer scale structures and you see that uh, here it has reached uh, 22 millimeter average at 6.93 milliseconds here it has reached the same uh, uh, radius at about 5.29 milliseconds so as you increase the urms it basically the average propagation speed increases. All right. So on this case, you see that as you increase, as as you have went, gone to five atmosphere and uh, and uh, and uh, URMS of uh, even high, uh, same URMS as this, but uh, uh, while you have changed the pressure, this there is this this the structure, the 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 structure of this flame is much much smaller than what you have here. Okay, so this this uh, flame structure is even smaller than what you have here. Mm, okay, and this is um, uh, uh, this is because your uh, both your flame thickness as well as your Kolmogorov length scale has decreased mm, in this uh, mm, in this uh, in these cases. Okay, so that causes this uh, emergence of this fine scales finer scale structures, and it has even you see that it is even um, propagating at a faster rate at about 4.47 milliseconds. It has reached the diameter of 22.74 uh, millimeter. Okay. So, uh, then we can uh, uh, the, the observations of that apart from this emergence of different scales uh, in these uh, experiments. So, uh, in these experiments which are conducted at a URMS at of 1 to 6 milliseconds and, uh, and 1 to 6 meters per second and a pressure of 1 to 5 atmosphere and we used a high speed Schlieden imaging to characterize the flame propagation and high speed PIV was used for characterizing the non-reacting turbulence parameters. That is an important thing because how do you know the what is your URMS? So, you need to do a high speed PIV or you need to measure the velocity inside by LDV etcetera. But the interesting thing is that if you find out the average radius, how do you define the average radius? And so, so say this is your uh, you find out the total uh, perimeter of the um, on the total uh, area that is enclosed by the flame surface, and you say that is equal to a. 
So, you define the average radius is essentially is equal to a by uh, pi. So, of course, this is a little bit um, uh, it is essentially this average radius is a characteristic uh, length scale of the flame. Okay. Uh, so, then uh, this is how you define the average radius. So, if you now plot the average radius uh, by extracting the image from the different uh, from the all the um, uh, from the different flames and uh, if you plot the average radius versus time uh, what you see is that uh, first uh, before going into the tur turbulent flames if we compare it with the laminar flame. So, this is uh, you see what is uh, the, the average radius versus time for a laminar flame. Okay. So, this is for a laminar flame. Uh, you see that this is almost uh, linear with time. Okay, so the average radius is almost linear with time. So, but the, for the turbulent flames, you see that the average radius is not linear because if it was linear, it would have been something like this. So, it essentially concave upwards. Okay, so uh, you see the average radius versus time being linear means dr dt. Okay, uh, which is essentially a measure of the flame uh, speed is essentially constant. Okay. Whereas, if this is linear, okay, so then it means dr dt um, essentially increases um, with time. Okay. So, dr dt essentially increases with time. Now, that is a very interesting thing because then it means that essentially the flame is accelerating with time or in the other way as the radius is large, the flame speed is large. Okay. So, there is a uh, that is a very interesting thing that is uh, not seen in a, uh, in a laminar flame. Of course, you can see a little bit of this effect when you have different Lewis numbers um, depending on the Lewis number greater than or less than unity. You can have a um, you can have uh, uh, conditions where you have uh, essentially uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the flame uh, can, um, uh, can, uh, can accelerate, but it definitely cannot accelerate as much as like a turbulent flame where you see this strong uh, non-linearity of this average radius versus time. So, uh, this is a very interesting uh, point and this needs to be further probed uh, and then uh, what you can uh, you need to find out utilizing this the question was that can we find out a scaling relationship for the turbulent flame. So, if we plot uh, what we see is that if we plot y axis as 1 by S L B that is normalized with the mean flame speed is essentially can be taken as S T by S L B that is a bound flame speed whereas D R E D is equal to your S T. And uh, so, with if this you plot on the y axis um, and uh, on the x axis you plot this URMS by SL times average radius by delta L. Okay. So, this we plot this thing um, uh, average radius by delta L. I will come into this why we come to this choice. Then you see all this uh, uh, experimental data can essentially collapse on this Reynolds number to the power of 0.54 plot. Okay. So, we can write in this correlation um, in the scaling law we see that this uh, this law emerges this powerful law emerges whereas, we have a Reynolds number which is based on a turbulent Reynolds number which is based on average radius and this scales as to the power of 0.54 which is nearly to the power of 0.5. Now, why do we uh, scale with this parameter at all that needs to be understood. First of all the most of the experiments are in essentially the thin reaction zone regime and you saw that by down colors uh, and as well as by our uh, uh, calculations analytical work your uh, ST by SL for a planar laminar flame for a statistically planar flame can scale as U, U RMS by uh, SL times L 0 by LL okay. or uh, your integral length scale by flame thickness which is the uh, uh, symbol that we use here. Okay, but that was for a statistically planar flame. Okay. Now, for a, uh, for, a, for, a, for a expanding flame you see uh, the flame is expanding in a, in, a, in a cylindrical volume which contains turbulence. Okay. But okay, why is the flame uh, accelerating or why is the turbulent flame speed higher than the, uh, higher than the uh, laminar flame in first place? The reason is that because turbulence has stretched and wrinkled and folded this flame surface at a multitude of length and time scales okay, and that has caused this area surface area to increase. Okay. So, for a statistical planar flame all the scales of turbulence that are present right from the integral length scales to the Kolmogorov length scales can stretch can participate in this stretching wrinkling and folding of the flame surface. Okay. But for an expanding flame okay, which at a particular instant is of radius r, this statistically spherical flame which is at a average radius r 
can only be stretched, folded and wrinkled by turbulence of length scales which are equal and smaller than R. Because the turbulent eddies which are greater than R, this will only convect this kernel, okay. this will only push this kernel instead of stretching and folding it. So, only those only those eddies which are equal and smaller than R can participate in this stretching and folding processes for this uh, statistically uh, spherical flame, for this uh, expanding flame. So, at a given radius r, if you look at this, if you look at this flame, okay, at a given radius r, only eddies which are smaller than and uh, smaller than this radius r can uh, can uh, can stretch and fold it. Okay, that is the idea. Whereas, if an if you have an ad which is this, okay, it cannot stretch and fold it. It can only push it. Whereas, pushing it and convecting it on average does not create any stretching, does not create any new area and hence that should not participate in the in, in the turbulent flame speed as such. So, that is why instead of L 0, the cut instead of L 0 which is of course, uh, you know we can have a L 0 in this uh, configuration also, the appropriate choice of length scale in this problem is radius. Okay. And this was reported in our paper by Chaudhuri, Uzu and Law in the physical review letters. Okay. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, choice of average radius is a very important uh, consideration and other groups have also shown that when you use average radius for uh, expanding flames, you can essentially uh, collapse all the data and arrive at this kind of uh, scaling loss. So, that is an uh, important thing, but still there is more needs to be understood about uh, what are the different uh, intricate mechanisms about this, um, uh, this that, uh, that are in play in this one. So, then we show that that uh, if you take Kobayashi's data for a Bunsen flame and uh, when our spherically expanding flame by appropriate choice of appropriate length scales, we can essentially collapse the different data into into one um, into into this kind of a uniform uh, uh, uniform um, uh, plot. So, um, then uh, we did with different experiments and uh, we saw that when uh, uh, when if we just uh, use the uh, the, uh, the flame thickness when you use different uh, fuels whose uh, Lewis number and Maxstein numbers are different uh, then the only use choice of the flame thickness cannot describe your turbulent flame speeds. So, then we show that then one has to use this um, uh, parameter called Maxstein length uh, uh, defined on a one side uh, for uh, collapsing most of the data on a, on a given on a narrow band and uh, we showed this by using uh, different kinds of fuels ranging from methane to um, ranging from methane to ethane uh, to uh, ethylene to uh, uh, to n butane um, to uh, dme dimethyl ether and also by using data from isooctane data from leads okay so over this over this large variation of properties over this large uh, urms uh, as well as different pressure and different fuels uh, we showed that um, that if you use this kind of a scaling law and that that also came from this um, analysis that if you use this kind of a scaling law then you can have a you can uh, collapse this uh, turbulent flame speed um, uh, if you use this kind of a parameter you can collapse the turbulent flame speed over a narrow band so, and uh, then the question was that this uh, does this uh, uh, scaling law is uh, does it really hold uh, depend on these two in individual parameters independently. So, um, is it just uh, we get this uh, this half just by chance. So, if we just uh, fit uh, this uh, data on the surface uh, using a surface plot and if you cho choose this m and n as, as uh, independent uh, parameters and you fit whatever data you get uh, from different experiments into uh, um, over um, uh, the, uh, of all the experiments um, in this uh, plot, then you get a, 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 a m to be equal to 0.43 and n to be 0.45, which is close to 0.5. So this way you show that this uh, uh, this is in, uh, indeed um, uh, reasonably good uh, scaling law, which holds over a wide range of um, conditions. And then I'll show you how uh, uh, we can find out uh, how the. Uh, the different uh, uh, how we do can do this mean scattering images are for different uh, experiments and uh, PIV. So, for doing PIV first you have to do high speed mean scattering uh, uh, and then you see that uh, this is how the um, uh, the flame is expanding and then you can find out the vectors and of course, the fuel is uh, fuel uh, the, the flame consumes this uh, olive oil droplets which was used for seeding the flow and you can see that this how the flame expands in the surrounding turbulence um, okay, and um, uh, 
uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, then one we can we can find out the, the find out the flame edge and the different uh, uh, things like uh, the, the, the tangential uh, flame speed, the tangential straining rate as well as the curvature at uh, different uh, points on the flame surface as well as the uh, the local uh, flow velocities you know, which cause this wrinkling. So. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, then uh, uh, the, those uh, things can be evaluated and um, um, and uh, we uh, found out that the URMS does not change too much uh, with and without the presence of the flame and that was important because all the scalings that I presented were obtained with, um, with URMS which was obtained in the cold flow. So, question can arise that uh, how much does the URMS actually change in presence of the flame. It uh, turned out, turns out in this case it did not change too much with the flame but uh, with the presence of the flame but one needs to do other experiments in different other configurations to find out what is the effect of uh, the flame um, on the URMS because just as the, uh, as the turbulence uh, enhances the flame surface area and distorts the flame surface the flame can also uh, or can also distort the, the neighboring flow field by due to the gas expansion. So, when the turbulent flame is or the laminar flame is expanding it is actually pushing the surrounding gases um, and uh, that can change the local flow fields. We found out that the local uh, average flow field changes, but the local um, uh, but the URMS field does not change too much mm, and uh, this was uh, documented in a uh, proceedings of uh, combustion institute 2015 paper. So, we will uh, that is all uh, up to here. And uh, in the uh, final thing, we'll take up um, um, this Bremos Libby model, and um, uh, with that, we'll close uh, turbulent flame speed. So, thank you.